guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on the WW or the Weight Watchers Blue Plan. Happy Monday, it's Monday so it's meal prep day. I have three really good recipes for you. We have breakfast, we have lunch, we have a dessert that's going to take you back to your childhood and not to mention, it's incredible. So if you're excited for another meal prep, give this video a big huge thumbs up. And if you're new or you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you here. Just hit the little subscribe button and click the bell right next to it so you never miss a single video. Check out the description box down below for nutrition coaching. I do offer personalized to you macros and calories. Let me give you the information to be most successful wherever you are on your healthy lifestyle journey. And if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching or to talk with me directly, I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. Links, discounts to everything I shared with you in today's video, as well as all of my favorite things, and of course my Facebook group are also down in that description box. Come on over, join us on Facebook, we'd love to have you. So let's jump in to another WW meal prep. For breakfast this week, I am making homemade orange rolls. So basically a cinnamon roll spin off into an orange sweet roll. I am modifying the original recipe quite a bit just to number one, make it easier and number two, make it a little bit more point friendly. So let's jump into what is in the homemade orange rolls. First, you're going to need some light butter, self-rising flour. Now, if you don't have self-rising flour, you can add baking powder or soda to regular flour and make it self-rising flour. You'll need some plain non-fat Greek yogurt, Powder sugar alternative, I am using the Lakanto monk fruit. You guys know how much I love my monk fruit sweetener. I will link Lakanto down in the description box with 15% off for you guys. You're also going to need some one third less fat cream cheese, two oranges, and then some sugar substitute. Again, I have the Lakanto monk fruit. This is the organic one. I really, really like this one. And this is also on their website where the 15% off discount applies. So let's jump in to making some orange rolls. For our orange rolls, I'm actually going to make two ingredient dough versus using flour and yeast and butter and eggs like the recipe suggests. Now they may not get as fluffed up and full if I would have used yeast versus two ingredient dough, but this is less ingredients. It makes it easier. It's less calories, less points. So I'm going to start with one and a half cups of my self rising flour. And then I like the Fa A 0% Greek yogurt the best for two ingredient dough because it doesn't make it sticky. This is a thicker yogurt. For the recipe, it's generally a one-to-one -one ratio. So if I did one and a half cups of flour, I would do one and a half cups of Greek yogurt. But I always just add Greek yogurt in until my dough is the consistency that I want my dough to be. I'd rather add it little by little instead of add so much that my dough is really, really sticky. So that's exactly what I'm going to do is just add Greek yogurt in and mix my dough as I go until I have the perfect consistency. So once I have my dough pretty mixed, I like to go in with my fingers. I think it works the best to finish mixing the dough. So I just put a little cutting sheet down here on my board and I'm going to add my dough. You can always, again, add more Greek yogurt as you go. It's just harder to take away. So I just go in, like I said, little by little. I may need to add a little bit more to my dough, but I am going to just start mixing my dough together with my fingers until I have a ball of dough, essentially like a ball of pizza dough. So this is what you want your dough to look like so you can see that it holds its shape really well into that ball of dough. So I have two oranges here. I am going to zest both of these oranges onto a paper plate and then we'll start putting together the dough portion of the rolls. So I'm going to take my ball here of two ingredient dough and I'm gonna roll it out into a long kind of tube looking ball of dough 
roll of dough so that I can cut that into the cinnamon rolls. Once you have the roll of dough, you're going to take some of that orange zest and you're just going to kind of place that on top. You can spread it around. We don't wanna use all of the orange zest. We need some for the icing. We are icing these, which how exciting is that? But you can use a good amount of the orange zest and just tap it over the roll of the dough. Then I have a couple tablespoons of light butter and I'm just going to drizzle that over the top. I did melt it down where it's pretty much melted. And then I'm going to just take a couple teaspoons of my monk fruit sweetener and drizzle that right on top of that butter and that will crystallize the sugar as it cooks and that sugar will stay on our rolls that way as well. And then we're going to cut this into eight equal size rolls. So I'm going to start in the middle here and then I'm going to cut each half into four. I want eight rolls total. Now these aren't going to have the traditional cinnamon roll shape because we didn't roll these up. They're gonna be more like a biscuit shape, but they're going to be an orange biscuit instead of an orange roll. On a cooking sheet spray with non-stick cooking spray, I'm going to add the rolls. So you can see that they don't have that traditional roll up that you would see in a cinnamon roll, but I'm really excited for these regardless. Maybe calling them an orange biscuit is better than calling them an orange roll, but there they are. They're going to go in an oven at 375 degrees until cooked through. When they get close to being cooked, that's when we're going to make up the glaze for the rolls. I just pulled the orange rolls out of the oven. While they're cooling, let's make the glaze. So to my bowl here, I have added one half of a cup of light butter and three ounces of one third less fat cream cheese. I'm going to add one cup of the Lakanto powdered sugar. I'm going to add all of the rest of the orange zest that we didn't add to the top of the rolls. And then for the liquid, I'm actually going to squeeze in the two oranges that we zested. I'm going to add as much of the natural orange juice as I need to mix this together to make a glaze or frosting consistency. So I went ahead and added both of the oranges. So now I'm actually going to use my handheld mixer here and mix this together until I have a frosting type of consistency. frosted the rolls. There is quite a bit of the frosting left. So when I figure the points, I'm only going to figure the points for half of what I made. Also, can you see that it's kind of, what's that word, like coagulating? It's chunky. So I don't know that I really love that a whole lot, but I mean, the rolls look really delicious. So let's go ahead and put these in a storage container and we'll go over points and calories. So here are the orange rolls, you guys. I just tried these. These are incredible. They are so good. They're that perfect amount of sweetness and you get that brightness from the orange. These are also really good sized and they are six points on all plants per roll. So what I'm going to do is have this with some zero point foods like eggs or fruit or maybe both of those, but six points for a sweet roll, not bad at all. So here's this week's breakfast. lunch this week. I am making caprese chicken burgers. I'm so excited for this. These have pesto in them and basil, which literally are my favorite things in the world. So let me show you what's in today's recipe. First, you're going to need pesto, mozzarella cheese. I'm using the light mozzarella from Trader Joe's, but you could really use any part skim mozzarella, a tomato, ground chicken. You want to get the leanest that you can so that it's zero points or very low in points, some light mayonnaise, lemon juice, fresh basil, salt and pepper, and then buns of your choice. I'm using the Great Value Buns from Walmart. These are three points per bun. I'm going to give you the points for just the burger in the event that you don't want a bun or your bun points vary. So let's jump into the recipe. So first thing we're going to do is actually make up the meat portion of the chicken burgers. So I have a pound of ground chicken. I'm going to go ahead and add that here to a medium sized bowl. 
I'm going to add one tablespoon of pesto and some salt and pepper. And then I'm going to mix this together really well. I'll probably end up honestly going in with my hands to finish mixing this, but I'm going to get this fully mixed so that we can form these into our burgers. I'm going to form my meat mixture into four equal sized patties and put them here in my skillet. I did go ahead and spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. You could also grill these on your outdoor grill. You could pop them in your air fryer, your oven, whatever your preference is, but I'm going to just go ahead and fry these up on my stove top. Just close your eyes and we'll be shooting stars And you know I can wait for forever no more Now tell me are you ready? Are I'm going to get my burgers frying up and in the meantime we're going to chop our tomato, our basil and get the rest of the burger pieces put together. So I'm going to go ahead and slice my tomato. We have four burgers total so I want eight slices of tomato so that I can put two thin slices per burger. And then I'm going to put together about 16 basil leaves. So I can put two to three basil leaves per burger. I love basil. You guys, I can eat this just as the herb. That's how much I love basil. delicious burgers. I just pulled them off of the stove, so I'm just going to set those aside. I also pulled out a glass storage container, and I'm going to pop the burgers into here for storage once they are cooled. So I wanted to share with you how I'm going to put the burgers together. Now, I'm not going to assemble the burgers before I eat them for obvious reasons, but there's a few things that will top each of these caprese burgers. So first is mozzarella cheese. So what I'll probably do is just put a tablespoon or so, maybe two tablespoons per burger. You're not going to need a lot of cheese. Pesto is so flavorful that that is going to be the standout flavor and you, so you don't need to waste your calories and points on a lot of cheese, but I will be putting a couple of tablespoons of cheese. And then you saw that I went ahead and pulled some basil leaves off. I tried to remove as much air as I could out of the bag. So I'll top it with a couple of the leaves. And then I have two slices. These are pretty thin slices of tomato as well per burger. And then like I mentioned, I'll be using the three point Walmart bun. Now for the condiment on the burger, you can make basil aioli, very, very simple. So you're going to use some light mayo. And again, I'm going to make the aioli as I eat the burgers. I don't wanna pre-make it. That way I can measure it out as I put it together, but basically it'll be a tablespoon or so of light mayonnaise, a little bit of lemon juice just to thin it out and make it go just a little bit further, and then just a little bit of pesto. I mean, maybe a teaspoon or so. And what I'm going to do is mix the mayonnaise, the pesto, and the lemon juice all together to make a aioli to top the burger. So let's go over the points of the burgers because like I mentioned, that is the only thing I'm going to give you points for because you may not want the aioli sauce. You may use a different bun or no bun at all, but just for the burger, there are only three points per burger on all plans. So that's not bad at all. Now, if you if you make up the aioli, you're going to have about a point worth of mayonnaise, and then you're probably going to have a point or so worth of pesto. So that's not bad for a condiment. The tomato, the basil are zero. It'd be zero points for a tablespoon of the Trader Joe's light cheese or light mozzarella, and then whatever bun you use the points for that. So I'm so excited. These smell incredible. And like I said, basil and pesto are two of my very favorite things. For a sweet treat, I'm making Rice Krispie treats. My husband, you guys, is so incredibly excited for this. I'm going to show you two different ways to make these, or one additional thing you can add to it if you would like. So you're going to need four simple ingredients. Of course, marshmallows, because what Rice Krispie treat doesn't contain marshmallows? Rice Krispies, of course some light butter, and some pudding. I'm using the butterscotch pudding because if you watch my grocery haul, I originally was going to do pistachio flavored, but there are, 
there is no pistachio pudding in my town. So butterscotch it is. I've melted down my three tablespoons of butter in a pretty large stock pot. I'm going to add in the entire bag of mini marshmallows and then we're going to stir until the marshmallows are melted. Now that our marshmallows are pretty close to being melted, I'm going to add in about a quarter cup of the butterscotch pudding and then go ahead and stir that in while you're continuing to allow those marshmallows to fully melt. Oh my gosh, you guys, this smells so good. How fun would these be for Halloween? Because that butterscotch did kind of tinted a pretty orange or fall color. So great recipe as we move into fall. Go ahead and stir until all of the marshmallows are melted or pretty close to being melted. Now we're going to add in four cups of Rice Krispie treats. So there's two and four and then stir to coat just like old school Rice Krispie treats. We're just putting a little spin on these by adding in some pudding for flavor. To a quarter sheet pan, I went ahead and added all of the Rice Krispie mixture. Now you can press this down with greased hands. I'm just using the back of the spatula and we're just going to press the Rice Krispie mixture into place. And there are the Rice Krispie treats. We're going to let these cool completely. And then I'm going to show you kind of a fun spin that you can put onto these. So the Rice Krispie treats are set up now. So my thought was you could take some white chocolate chips. These are just the Lilies or chocolate chips, butterscotch chips. You know Lilies has so many different flavors. Same with Baked Believe. And we can melt a few of these down and drizzle them over the Rice Krispie treats. Now my husband, as you may or may not know, does not eat chocolate, white chocolate included. So what I'm going to do is weigh out some of the white chocolate chips and then I'm just going to drizzle over half of the pan of Rice Krispie treats, saving the other half for my husband to be able to eat. So I went ahead and melted just a little bit of the Lily's white chocolate chips. I will put on my website the exact number of grams. Now by drizzling this over just half of the bars, it will not add any additional points. I didn't use enough of Lily's chips. And based on the number of bars that we'll be making with the chips, it will not add anything additional. So that is really nice. So again, I'm only going to do about half the pan, saving the non-chocolate covered ones for my husband. So here are the Rice Krispie treats. I know, I took one out of the middle, but here it is. I wanted to show you guys the size of the Rice Krispie treats. Now, that is a pretty good sized Rice Krispie treat. See that I cut my pan into 12 bars. I thought that that was a good size bar for the points. And each bar, whether or not you drizzle over some Lily's white chocolate or chocolate chips, is going to be five points per bar. That is not bad at all. I'm excited to have the side over here chocolate free for Troy. And then this is going to be my dessert for the week. So I'm so excited to be able to incorporate Rice Krispie Treats into a weight loss journey. How great is that? Whether you're following WW or not, you can still enjoy your favorite treats without guilt. Thank you for joining me on this week's WW Meal Prep. I hope you are as excited as I am about these three recipes. I know I can't wait to dig in to these rolls, these burgers, and these Rice Krispie Treats all week long. I think Troy's more excited about the Rice Krispie Treats than I am actually. So if you enjoyed this meal prep, give it a big thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. Channel. And of course, if you're new or you haven't yet subscribed, hit that little subscribe button and click the bell right next to it so you never miss a single video. Don't forget to check out the description box for nutrition coaching, links, discounts to my favorite things, and head on over, join us over on Facebook as well. Happy Monday, friends. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.